Hello YouTube. Um, I'm just coming back with, uh, I'm going to try and knock out a whole bunch of response videos that I've been kind of lagging behind on. I started, it started to catch up with me the number of subscriptions that I've, um, I'm actually uh, got tagged right now and so there's a lot of videos coming out and they're coming out more quickly than I can uh, even really keep up with everybody's channels but I'm doing my best to move along through videos as I have time but um, that whole process of me going back and, and uh, watching some videos recognizing some videos from people's channels that I missed for one reason or another uh, as well as just kind of getting caught up on you know everything that people have been talking about over the last couple of weeks month month and a half two months whatever as it reminded me that there were a bunch of different responses that I wanted to make um, and so I'm gonna try and tackle a whole bunch of these here this particular video is gonna be a response to Robert J Fremantle's question of what got you into gaming and I actually recorded this once before and I don't know what happened to it I lost it or it corrupted or something so I just thought I'd start over again so what got me into the hobby of RPGs? Um, I, in a general sense, even from my earliest years, I've always been um, very interested in fantasy, and, and I don't know if I owe that it to any particular source, other than perhaps my mother, who was very encouraging of me um, to learn to read. And I think that at its very basis, uh, you know, its simplest level, uh, my mother is ultimately responsible for a great deal of my um, my literary, uh, even uh, even sociological and psychological development. In that, she really encouraged me to learn uh, from a very early age. She really encouraged me to read and express or, or discover the enjoyment of the process of reading. And um, so, I learned to read at a very early age and. Um, also at a very early age I was very intrigued by uh, movies and also video games and so I think it's just kind of um, my my head was always in the clouds as it were that I was always interested in learning about something else another world other characters and so it was just a very natural process for me and so probably the most direct that like the first direct kind of link uh, stepping stone into gaming or into role-playing rather was that when I was a youth, when I was uh, probably in my, just before my teens and then kind of into my early to mid-teens, I was really into um, choose-your-own-adventure books. Now, I didn't get my start with, uh, like, the fighting fantasy or the lone wolf, uh, like a lot of you, uh, a lot of people who responded to this question did. Um, in fact, I'd never even heard of those books until well after I was already into role-playing. But just general choose-your-own-adventure books that I would check out from the school library or from the public library or that I would find um, in garage sales and stuff like that, they always fascinated me because I liked stories in general, um, you know, and fantasy stories and sci-fi stories particularly. But uh, when I don't, I don't even remember what my first choose your own adventure was. But when I discovered that there was a style of uh, there was a style of story out there that uh, ultimately let the reader be the one to make the choices, that fascinated me. It was totally and utterly compelling, and so I read far more um, choose your own adventure books from far more genres and writers and and eras that I can than I can possibly remember. And so ultimately, I think that was what why um, I was drawn to role playing. That first kind of element of role playing that I was exposed to, which I'll get to in just a moment, was that the concept of of um, discovering a story and being um, engaged in a world and being inside the mind of a character, and then and then being presented with scenarios and having to choose your reaction to those scenarios, having to choose your path through the adventure. And um, when I was, let's see, I would have been a freshman in high school. Uh, and actually, when I, was, uh, when I was in eighth grade, I think is when I started, uh, I discovered a little game by Richard Garfield called Magic the Gathering. And my friends and I, it was basically brand new. I, I believe it was maybe the the second or the third uh, edition of the rules that of, of the game that had been produced, so it was it was a year or two old maybe, 
but um, we saw it at the mall or something like that, and we and we thought, hey, this is really weird. There's like these cards, and they've got they've got dragons and goblins and all kinds of weird creatures and spells on them. Let's check this out. So we started playing Magic, and we really got into it. Well, so my my uh, freshman year of high school, a new guy moved into the apartments that we were living in, and I found out that he also played Magic, and so we met up one one day and. And we found out that we both had the, shared that in common, and so uh, we started playing magic cards together. And one one of our during one of our play sessions, uh, he just happened to kind of, uh, you know, prod me with the question, "Have you ever have you ever heard of a game called Dungeons and Dragons?" And I'd heard of it. I'd seen advertisements, you know, they, I'd seen the books on the shelf at Toys R Us. Excuse me. And um, but you know, I'd never delved into it. I'd never really understood what it was. I never, uh, you know, no, there was nobody ever explained it to me or, or anything like that. And so um, I really had no clue other than by name of what Dungeons and Dragons was or meant. And so he proceeded to run um, a little, some like one-on-one -on -one adventures with me with no rules. Um, he didn't have a copy of the rule book to show me. Um, we didn't like roll any dice. It was basically, he said, you know, I think, I, I think, um, he just created the scenario, and it was assumed that I was like a human fighter, I think is what I was. And, you know, it, he described this scenery, he described this setting, and and he would just kind of periodically stop and so say, so, what do you do? And, you know, I would, I at first I was kind of befuddled, and I didn't know how you were supposed to interact with that. But I did have a little bit of understanding, or a little bit of basis um, in my, in my uh, choose-your-own-adventure background. And so eventually I kind of felt out that this that it was kind of the same thing, except I wasn't limited to choice A, B, and C. I could literally come up with any um, possible course of action that I could conceive. And um, so we played a few adventures that way, uh, and it was just pure role-playing, and it was pure stimulus-response type of play. And that, from the very first session, I was just enraptured. It was... Um, um, it was a mind-blowing experience when I realized that I I had basically walked through a gate into another world, a world of limitless potential. And though those early sessions, I'm sure, were pretty rough, both from a uh, from his GMing and from my playing. Um, my I do recall that my character was pretty much kind of a play thing. That there were uh, I died several times and. There were several uh, dastardly traps and puzzles that he would put me through that were basically beyond my ability to to uh, to uh, solve. But um, but the point was getting me to understand what role playing games were, and it just it was totally mind blowing. And so we played that for a little while, and then uh, after he kind of stopped jamming those for me, we still seemed like I think we hung out, but he might have moved shortly thereafter. But um, but I took that impetus to um, go start running games for my brother. Uh, and so, you know, again, I didn't have access to any rule books or anything like that. Um, a friend of mine, a short time after, actually gave me a copy of the first edition AD&D Monster Manual, which was the, uh, the first role-playing game uh, book that I ever owned, actually. But, so I, would, I was running these scenarios with my uh, with my brother and some of his younger friends and that was because I think that what what drew me most or or when I thought about it what was most appealing to me about the the experience of role playing was the concept of being the game master being the dungeon master so being the one who set up all these scenarios who created you know who who created and played out the monsters who set the set up the traps and um, created the world, crafted the story, presented the scenarios to the players and, you know, and and explored it that way, being the instigator, being the world creator, being kind of the director of the action. That really appealed to me uh, from the very beginning. And so it was probably, it was probably pretty natural, plus the fact that at that time as well in the, uh, in the apartment community that we lived in, me being kind of the eldest of the kids in the neighborhood and being the one that being one of being basically one of the only ones who who knew about role playing uh through my friend Cody who who subsequently moved um I was natural it was natural that I would be the one to be the game master like that I would be the one to oversee it and so that was where 
that was uh, the formative or the formation rather of where um, my stance as a as a role player is seated very firmly in the game master's chair. I like playing. I, I love the opportunity to be a player as well. But I think it's just that um, that maybe by necessity, but also by desire, that game mastering was naturally appealing to me. And so, case in point, I took the opportunity to game master, even though. We had no concept of rules. I'd seen a couple of the funky dice through some folks that Cody introduced me to a group that would play uh, during lunch and recess and whatnot at school. And I watched them from afar a little bit, and I watched them roll these funky dice, and I found a game store that that sold those kinds of books and dice and that sort of thing. And so I started to become familiar with the idea that you got to tumble these little these funky little polyhedrons to randomize things. But again, you know, even without a, a solid rule set or anything like that, we were just off and running because there was nothing that was going to stop me from exploring this uh, this beautiful hobby that I had been ignorant of for so long, and I, and uh, I was a little, um, you know, I was, I was like making up for lost time or something like that, as it were. So very very shortly after that, after Cody had introduced me to AD and D, was when I really started to get into role playing. Uh, in the sense that of buying books, of, of reading the rules, of understanding the, the social contract of a role-playing game, of understanding the GM's duties, understanding the player's duties, understanding the ideas like character creation and the, the core mechanics and uh, ad uh, character advancement and all that sort of thing. And that was through the Star Wars D6 role-playing game. Uh, like I said, even though I'd been formally, formally introduced or informally introduced through uh, Advanced Dungeons and Dragons, when I discovered that there was a Star Wars role-playing game, which I also happen to be a huge Star Wars fan, and I said, Star Wars is awesome, and role-playing games are awesome, and so I must own this thing. And so I went out and I pre-ordered a copy of the second edition uh, revised Star Wars book right when it... You know, I happened to discover it just as it was just about to be released, and so I pre-ordered it and ran down to the bookstore when they said it was in and I picked up my copy and all summer long that summer I ran adventures for uh, one of my friends. I ran a, an adventure, well a campaign rather, for a friend of mine over the phone. We actually played probably three, sometimes four nights a week during the summer for about two or three or four hours at a stretch each night. And again, this was very, this was kind of very early. It was really more about the storytelling, about the concept of, of an interactive story. So I was running this Star Wars campaign for a friend of mine over the phone without any dice or anything or any rules, really. I mean, we created characters in the sense that he told me what kind of character he wanted to play, and, and we gave him a name, and we gave him some background, but we didn't roll up, you know, we didn't draw up any stats for him. We didn't, uh, we didn't make any dice rolling at all, and it really wasn't even necessary. There was never a point where we, I think maybe, I think too, maybe we were just enamored with the fact that what, of what we were doing, that we were creating a collaborative story, but there never came a point during that campaign, which was a pretty significant campaign, uh, and one of, uh, one of the most memorable, though maybe I have rose-tinted glasses on when I think about it, that there was never a point where it was there were disagreements between what he thought he should happen and what I thought should happen. It was very it was a very stimulus response thing. So I would tell him, "Here's the scenario. Here's what's happening. Uh, what does your character do?" And he would tell me what his character you know attempts to do, what sort of path he would take, and then I would narrate the results, and then I would come to another decision making point. Okay, so okay, so this this and this happens. So so what does he do now? How is he going to get out of this one? and um, really really good times and so uh, my very earliest years were very loose in terms of following any kind of rule structure or anything it was really just more about the drama uh, about the storytelling but so that was that was kind of how it built up it started off with choose your own adventures it moved into uh, things like video games you know like the Legend of Zelda video games and that sort of thing and then it went into uh, Magic the Gathering and then finally into uh, into very loose Dungeons and Dragons, followed by Star Wars, and then it just exploded from there. As soon as as soon as I had uh, kind of opened the that arc 
of the covenant, as it were, it was um, it took off and it has not really subsided since. I mean, there have been times, you know, there have been stretches where I wasn't in a consistent campaign, um, or you know, or or times where just there wasn't really a whole lot of time to game. But but I have I have been not deterred in the least, or or my passion for the hobby has not faded in the least since my very earliest days. Maybe I've become a little more cynical, maybe I've developed my sensibilities uh, a good bit more, maybe I've honed my skills a good bit more. I think I am a better gamer now than I was when I started, but but the fire is still there and I think uh, that's something that's really important. Uh, I've, had, I've had some moments of burnout, I've had some moments of, um, you know, just like anybody, you have times where I've never considered dropping out of the hobby entirely, but there have been times where, you know, gaming was frustrating because of either players or circumstances or the amount of free time or not being able to get together um, consistently as a group or not having the, sharing the same interests uh, in terms of what games to play or how to play the games, but but um, it's the hobby's been generally really good to me, and uh, so... Anyway, I'm not going to blather on too much longer about that. Uh, very awesome topic, Robert. I appreciate it, and um, I hope to talk to you guys again soon on the flip side. Like I said, I've got more responses coming out. I'm going to try and record a few more for you, so I will talk to you later.